Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. Just got our CAC submission back. What does that look like if you were to send a CAC order in? We're going to talk about that in this video. We're also going to show you what we got back from CAC, uh, some things that we're learning still, some things that we're trying to grasp, why it didn't CAC, why it did CAC. All those things are super important in this video, so stay tuned and enjoy. So just like we talk about old holders and CAC stickers and all these things that are kind of on the peripheral edge of numismatics, um, what we're, what our opinions are on CAC, which CAC basically is you know a sticker that they put on the outside of a coin. If you guys want to see a video of that, uh, we have that down below. But our vision and what we see with CAC coins is that they're going to become extremely valuable over the next 20, 25 years. Just our opinion, they're going to be increasing in value. The reason being is because they have one guy that knows numismatics like nobody else does. Uh, and a large part of uh, everybody really trusts him on how to determine original, nice coins that are really just cream of the crop. And so uh, just knowing all those things and knowing what coins are in uh, that are CAC certified, um, you'll start to get an appreciation and knowledge for coins that are nice, original, and just have all the qualities that you want for either your personal collection or for your clients. So um, that's just something, and that's just our opinion of what uh, cat coins are. But And if I was to kind of phrase it differently or think about it in a different light, um, just like I was talking about old holders and cat stickers, all of them have a fixed point in time. All of them are finite which basically means that there's only going to be so many coins that are, have CAC stickers, there's only going to be so many coins and rattlers. All these things are super important. And so when you think about John and his legacy, we're only going to view the CAC stickers at this time as, as valuable. And then over time, when there's less and less being put out there, they're going to even climb more and more in value. And there's been so many people coming to the space at the same time that it's, you know, we're in a really hot market and a really interesting market. So cat coins are very important and imperative to uh, your knowledge of, of coins and your knowledge of the space. So uh, do your research, understand you know what coins are selling for, especially with CC approved coins. Uh, you'll learn a lot, but let's show you guys some coins. So this is what it looks like when you get your coins back from CAC. As you can see, we have a date here of every coin. Uh, just the description of it. We have that Franklin half dollar, Barber quarter, you know, uh, a lot of things that you guys can see here. And then we also have, you know, who graded them and uh, their condition. And then they also have a certain number and if they passed or not. So basically every CAC coin is graded on three different criteria. Either it did CAC or it didn't CAC or it exceeded. And what exceeded means is basically, uh, you know, it, it performed well over that grade. Basically a grade and a half above. Um, what passed means is that basically it was cream of the crop for the grade and not CAC basically means it wasn't, you know, exactly what John likes in terms of his opinion of coins and it just wasn't, uh, you know, the best of the grade and he would just leave a not CAC here. For all you guys that just don't know about uh, CAC. And as you can see, Drew got destroyed. Drew did not get very many that passed. And that's okay. We sent in some coins that we knew most likely wouldn't pass, but that just comes with the nature of the business, and that's okay. Um, but yeah, this is what you get back from CAC, and we're looking forward to sending some more in, especially from the personal collection. And we have a few coins that came in recently that we're very happy about. But let me show you guys these coins right here. Uh, you'll enjoy them a lot. Alrighty, starting off with my favorite coin here, Din Cac, which I'm very confused about. This is an 1870. Seated half dollar graded proof 64 cameo by uh, PCGS has a violet and auburn kind of hue to it. I really do like the coin a lot. Has it does scream cameo to it, and I'm you know it's I'm very excited to get this coin back in. And uh, this coin actually is going to a new home, and I'm very sad about it. But uh, the show must go on, and I did get a good fit video of it, so I can look back on it from time to time and you know drool, but. The next coin I wanted to show you guys is 1901 Barber Quarter, graded MS64 by NGC. Sent this one in for Trent. I thought this one had a strong shot of cacking, and it did. 
just the really nice original surfaces. Still has a really cool cartwheel to the coin as well. Completely toned on both sides, so I hope Trent really does enjoy this when he gets it back. He has, you know, his barber sets growing by the day, and he's... Are you guys enjoying this video so far? If you are, please hit that like button. Uh, comment your thoughts about CAC. Uh, you know, what do you think of the coin so far? Uh, what surprised you about what CAC and what didn't CAC? Uh, we would like to know that. Um, and subscribe if you're new. Uh, new videos every single week, you know the drill. And hit up our uh, brand new podcast, The Freedom Coin Show. I have a link for uh, it down below if you guys want to check it out. Subscribe over there. And uh, visit our website, GushaCollectibles.com. Enough with me ranting. Let's get back to today's video. Really involved in that, and I'm very happy for him. This is a 1959 Franklin Half Dollar with pretty nice luster. I don't know why it didn't cack. Maybe it was because it has some kind of dark spots on the rim. But that's kind of my main focus on the coin. Dark spots, but apart from that, has pretty cool color on the coin. Really nice luster. And Casey actually found this at a coin show, like we were talking about, and he submitted it. Came back 66 the first time, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm pretty sad I didn't cack, though. Here's one I thought that wouldn't cack, but what I was talking about earlier is basically sometimes you just need to send them because they are a tough date, and having that sticker on them is very important. Um, and as you guys can see, a lot of the circulation is on the face here. It just doesn't have a really kind of strong, defined face. It is good six, so that's kind of what happens with it anyway. But another thing that kind of bothers me on the coin is there's like some light scratches, as you can see, um, on the coin just right underneath the stars. And I thought that might have an issue um, at CAC, and it ended up happening where I didn't CAC, but that's okay. It happens. Here is uh, this 1864 L on the ribbon. I got this one from my dad, and I did think it had a shot, but... Didn't know how uh, spots played into how CAC viewed coins. This one has a nice chocolate obverse here, as you can see. I, I think it's a really strong coin, but when you flip it over, it has that kind of black spotting to the right, and that kind of probably turned John off, which was my main concern when sending it in. Still, a tough coin, AU58. Really wished it could have cacked for my dad, but that's just the way it goes. Learning a lot from CAC, and that's what's the most important part. Because after a certain amount of time, I don't really give up on things, I just keep doing it. And I get beat up sometimes, but that's just the way it goes. The next coin I wanted to show you guys is this 1873S Seated Half Dime. Great MS64 by PCGS. Very hard to find in a rattler, but as you can see on the coin, it does have some toning and it is a little bit dingy. And I think the reason why this one didn't cack is because it's just a little lackluster. That's what Cole kind of told me when he saw it for the first time. But wanted to give it a shot, wanted to see if, if it did, because if it did, I think it would add a, a tremendous premium to the coin, especially it being in a Rattler holder. But still love the coin a lot. I'm excited to find a new home for it when the opportunity arises. Here's one that kind of perplexed me here. This is a 1919 SOQ, a great MS64 by PCGS. The luster is, I mean, it's pretty strong on the coin. I think it was nice enough to get, receive a CAC sticker. I don't see too many uh, early dates looking like this. I normally find them where it's like flat or someone dipped it out. But this coin, I think the luster is so strong on it. I think there might have been a few spots on it possibly that bothered him. Or there was just something underlying on the coin. Maybe like a hairline or two. Uh, but I still love the coin a lot. It's an early date. And yeah, it, it is what it is, and I'm just still learning from it. I'm going to have to take a loop to that coin to understand it fully. And, uh, you know, maybe ask a few people as well. This is a 1941S uh, Mercury Dime, great MS65 star, full bands by NGC. And as you can see, when I kind of put it down a little bit, it does have that really nice proof-like obverse there. And then when you flip over the coin, it does have that same kind of look to the reverse. Not sure how this one didn't uh, proof like, but maybe I'll give it a reconsideration, see how it goes. That was the main reason for getting this CAC sticker to begin with. If I got the CAC sticker, maybe that'll hold more weight when I go for a reconsider. Uh, this coin in proof like is a little bit more expensive, so that's why I wanted to do that. And, uh, you know, I thought it was proof like on both sides, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. This one is a 1907 Barber Quarter, great AU58 
by NGC. I thought this one really would cack all day long, but I think it has just too much wear on the coin for him to, to cack it, sadly. As you can see on the on the face there, all the way down kind of down the cheek, it's just really rubbed. And that, that possibly could have given way to why he didn't cack it. Uh, maybe it's just not the cream of the crop for an AU58. I still thought it was a stunner, but uh, sorry, Trent. <laughs> I thought it was just, I thought it was the one, that, it was the one, you know, but that's just the way it goes. Here's a few coins that we actually got in this week. A few that we might send to CAC, a few that already came back from CAC from somebody else. Really like that coin. And, uh, you know, a little bit of coins that you guys have been looking for as well. This is a 1900S Barber Quarter, grade AU53 by PCGS. The reason why I bought this coin is because it has some character on it. A little bit of color around the rim here, as you can see. I don't think this one, if I send it in, would cack. It just has to be more original. But still a nice, pretty coin. Um, finding toning on barbers is a little tough sometimes. So uh, getting one like this in with a little bit of a better date, 1900S, is always a good plus. Here is one that people have been asking about like crazy. This is an 1852 uh, 3 cent silver. I can't find any of these right now, and the ones we actually did post on the website from a few videos back did sell. So getting one like this in a better condition is, is one that I really like, and I hope to get more of these in the future uh, when a coin show finally pops up for us. But pretty strong coin. Hope someone picks this one up for their collection. Now, oh my gosh, this thing, whew, it's a beast. This is an 1880S uh, Morgan Dollar. Great MS65 by uh, PCGS. Did receive a CAC sticker, and the toning on this coin is immaculate. As you can see, you know it has some really strong color uh, right above the head. And we go into that kind of goldish blue and then orange. But man, I mean, this coin got a little rainbow on the reverse as well. Luster's got that San Francisco luster. Whew. Man, if I could whistle, man, I'd whistle loud for that coin. But here's a coin that we're considering to send into CAC. This is 1900 now Indian head scent grade MS63 red red sorry I normally say red brown but red this time actually and the reason why I picked this coin up is because it's in a nice OGH holder and uh, the coin does scream red and there's not many in these actually that are designated red so I wanted to see what CAC would think about this coin it looks a tad brown on the reverse here just where it says scent but uh, maybe they'll give it a CAC sticker, and I kind of wanted to set it aside for my collection, but we'll see how it goes. I think it does have a chance at CAC, but here's the last coin I wanted to show you guys in today's video. This is an 1883 No Sense V Nickel, and uh, the reason why I'm showing this one off is because I think it has its best uh, shot at CAC. I just don't see too many problems with the coin. A few light hits to the right of the head there, and... Uh, there are a little bit of hits right between the V, but other than that, no PVC on the coin, no ugly spots. Um, you know, we're just we're just plugging and chugging, trying to see how it goes and uh, see how if this coin cacks. I don't know. I think the coin is pretty strong, but thank you guys for watching this part of the video. Let's talk to you about what are you. Now that we showed off some coins and talked a little bit about CAC, we also want to. Uh, talk with you guys a little bit about Witter U and what Witter U is, is basically there's a coin shop out in San Francisco named Witter Coin and they basically have an annual kind of almost it feels like kind of a college or school for young numismatists that want to learn about the hobby and want to understand grading and meet really important people in the space and uh, it's a you know it's a very important time for them whoever is allowed to go I think it's under the age of 21 um, but there's a lot of good kids that went last year and they're actually expanding uh, how many people can go this year and Everything is ex is paid for for these kids um, and they get so much knowledge and understanding um, In terms of the space and also who they can call on when they need help I think that's super important and I think this is 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 very vital because a lot of the people in the space right now are are just older gentlemen um, and you know, they've been working at coin shows for a long time and we just need some new up and comers in the space that want to either help a coin shop, help a coin shop, help a coin dealer, or they want to set up at a show. And I think that you know, as the you know years pro proceed, as they carry on, I think that a lot of these young numismatists um, are just going to need 
good people in the space that want to help them out. And I think Witter U does that for a lot of people. So with Seth's approval, which Seth Chandler is actually over uh, Witter Coin and over this Witter U fund, um, he he kind of created a video for all these young numismatists, and they talked about how it really helped them uh, last year and how it made them uh, you know better people and also uh, you know more inspired in the space. But let me share that video with you guys and then come back and talk to you a little bit more about Witter U. What's up everyone at Witter Coiner, all those watching. My name is Jackson Keefe. Derek Engler. It's Austin Willis. Hi, I'm Hunter Hicks. My name is Todd Lubick. Chris Alvarez. I'm Josh Roach. I attended the first ever Witter Coin U. Needless to say, the best numismatic experience in my life. Since losing my mentor in 2020 due to COVID, Witter Coin U has restored my confidence in collecting coins as a young numismatist. Witter Coin U has filled a huge void in my life. I was an attendant last year during the 2021 Where You, and it was absolutely the best time of my life. It pushed me into the best year of numismatics that I ever had. Something else it taught me is to be me, you know, unapologetically me when it comes to the hobby. The 40 kids who get to go are extremely lucky. I was lucky enough to go to the very first uh, Where You Coin You. The connections I made and the understanding of coins Without Witter Coin U, to get this understanding would probably take like three or four years for me naturally. What it really helped me out with was discovering what I wanted to do in my life. Now I'm 100% on coin dealing. You know, I have my desk in the back, I have my inventory. You know, after Witter Coin, I quit my job and started my own coin business to run full time instead. It gave me the confidence, the courage, and then also the skill set to do my own thing now. You know, I could do this too, you know, I can be a coin dealer. I've seen myself grow as a, like a grader and a collector since that experience. The Witter Coin U taught me the fundamentals of numismatics and uh, ethics. And this year I would like to be able to go deeper into that, um, the opportunity to become a dealer and um, just love coins more. <laughs> a numismatist never stops learning and now I have an opportunity to do it again. Now that I look at Wittercoin U2, there's also something that really attracts me, which is the advanced class, um, you know, focusing on bigger issues. It's essential that other people um, that are advanced in their young numismatic careers go to Witter U. It saves the hobby. A huge thank you. This is a great opportunity. I'm glad that more kids get to go this time. Hope to see you guys soon. Thank you for last year. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys, and I hope to see you this summer. I hope to see you all again in San Francisco. Okie okay, out. There's a lot of great kids in that video. A lot of uh, just people that inspire me to get up every day and sell coins and make videos. I know a lot of those people that I actually do business with on a weekly basis now. And they, you know, a lot of them are just so driven and so excited about the hobby. And so if you guys want to help out, if you guys want to donate, anything you guys can contribute means so much to them. I'll leave a link down below so you guys can donate to the Witter U Fund, which basically just, you know, all that money goes towards paying the, you know, the bills of airlines and hotels and everything that these kids need um, just to be, uh, you know, in the Witter U program. But if you guys are under the age of 21 and you guys are interested in signing up as well, um, they have, you know, they have basically a sign up for everybody that wants to join, make a video, write an essay. I think that was the thing for last year. Um, you know, just tell them a little about yourself and a answer a few questions and then you'll be admitted. Uh, they, you know, they do a really stand up job, but I hope that reaches you guys that are under the age of 21. And if you're not under the age of 21, uh, please donate if you can. Um, it would mean a lot to them. Did you guys enjoy today's video? If you did, please leave a like, comment your thoughts down below. What do you guys think about the coins we showed off in this video? Uh, and subscribe if you're new. More coin videos coming out next week and we have a freedom coin show podcast you guys should go subscribe to we're going to be coming out with episode one very shortly and you guys will enjoy it but till next time i'll see you in the next video